The last few updates for Grounded have made me start to ask the question of what type of game is it supposed to be? When the game launched into early access, it was clearly a survival game. Even after the first year of updates, it still fit perfectly into that genre. The last couple of updates, however, have muddied the waters. Grounded no longer feels like purely a survival game anymore. Instead, the new upgrade systems that have been added to the game have made it feel more like an MMO Lite or RPG. In this video, I want to discuss these changes and show you why I feel this way. I'm curious to see what you think and if these changes will impact your decision to continue playing the game in the future. Before we begin, I want to thank Matthew Campbell, Steven Van, and all my other channel members for helping make videos like this possible. I also want to thank Mama Gamer for her tremendous support during my last couple of live streams. Channel memberships are the best way to support my channel, and you can become a member today for as little as $2 by clicking the join button below or the link in the description. Let's get started. I want to start this video off by showing that I am not opposed to grinding or putting lots of hours into a game. And the reason I want to do this is because I have had people question me saying, I just don't, that you basically saying, I don't want to put in the time. I don't want to put in the effort to have to get stuff. I just want to get it all at the beginning of the game easily without putting much effort in. So really quickly, what I want to just show, and for those of you who've never played this game, this might not mean nothing to you, but for those, some of you, I know some of you have in the past, at least if you've commented on my videos or you've been in my live streams, I know some of you have played this before. This is my stats from Fortnite Save the World. I put, logged in for 1140 days completed almost 7,000 missions on this account. I have like 500 on my other account. And also when I stopped playing the game, I had every single hero in the game. There were, I don't even remember how many heroes, over hundred heroes at max level. As you can see, 88 million hero XP dumped into my characters, all these other things here, weapons and traps and stuff like that, 115 million invested in that. And this just, I'm just trying to show this to put up front that I am willing to put in time. I think I have about 4,500 to 5,000 hours in Fortnite Save the World. I spent all that time playing through the missions, playing the same missions over and over again, grinding them when the, when the rewards were not that great. Even towards the end, they were still not great. They were much better, but they weren't that great. So I have no problem putting time into a game in order to make my character better, make the game easier for me to make the game basically just a better experience. So with that out of the way, I want to jump over and talk about why I think Grounded feels like it's going in this direction, but why I don't think it should be. So what I want to do is real quick show a picture that I put together in paint. So as you can see, I have fantastic artistic ability as I've displayed in some of my previous videos. And what this really shows is that the progression through the game was once pretty smooth and now it is just being completely slowed down. And I don't understand why it's going that route considering it is a survival game. It's not an MMO. It's not an RPG. It is a survival game, or at least it's supposed to be. And that's kind of what I'm going to discuss in this video. And what I want to show up here is now this is only taking into account armor. The same thing could be applied to weapons per, before the bug strike back public test server. If you load into the game right now and you're not in the public test server, you will be able to have access to the tier one armors probably on the first day pretty quickly. You can go over and get tier one armors. And when you craft those tier one armors, they will give you the maximum stats they're going to have. Now, some amount of time later, depending on your skill level or your ability or maybe your experience with the game or just basically how fast you want to progress, you can get tier two armor pretty quickly, probably within a couple of hours. If you just focus on playing the game, upgrade it and then just getting better weapons and just progressing, following the story along. And then a little bit longer later, you're going to get to the tier three armor because you do need to go to the sandbox in order to get the first tier three armor. And the later one to get the roly poly armor, you're going to need to go in the upper yard, which you're going to see down here. Now, with the public test server, with the, the changes that have been made are basically armors all start at level zero, meaning the defense they're going to provide you, the resistance they're going to provide you is far less than before the public test server. And for that reason, you're going to need to upgrade your armors. Now, over here, I showed basically where, where when you're going to be able to max out your armors. In order to upgrade your armors, the first, we're going to talk about this in just a second, you're going to basically need grubs and mostly tier one resources, basically all tier one resources to get yourself to level five. Now, in order to level five is not going to get you back to where you were before the public test server. You're going to have to get yourself to level nine just to get it back to where the armor's feeling somewhat what it felt like before the public test server. And I'm going to talk about that as well because the bugs were also buffed. So some bugs are still going to be stronger even when you have maxed out armor than before the public test server. And what this ends up happening is you're going to have to get berry leather to get to a tier two or excuse me, to get to level six and seven. And you're going to need to get pupa leather in order to get yourselves to, to get your armor up to levels eight and nine. So essentially what this means is more likely than not, no one's going to max out their tier one armors. And I think very few people are probably going to max out their tier two armors because by the time you get access to the pupa hide or the pupa, yeah, the pupa that are up in the upper yard, you're going to already have access to antlion armor. In fact, just to get up there, you're either going to have to either build your way up there 
or you're gonna have to get the get past the sizzling the charcoal the barbecue spill which means you're gonna need the antlion armor anyway which is tier three now in the past you would just get the tier three armor and you would have it you could get the tier three antlion armor before you even went to the upper yard you could not get the roly-poly armor after the i think the most recent update the into the wood update because they changed it where the roly polies they're sickly and regular roly polies in order to get the roly poly armor now you actually need to go up into the upper yard because you need lint to make it and you also need the roly poly parts and they're only found in the upper yard so that's why this is shifted over here so you can get the first tier three armor before going to the upper yard pre-pts to get the roly poly armor you will need to go into the upper yard now, in order to get any of the armors to feel back to where they were before the public test server, you're going to have to be all the way up into the upper yard because you can't get pupa leather, pupa hide, which you turn into pupa leather, without going all the way up by the, the shed. So that's kind of, just want to put this together just to show like kind of an example of where it's going to be because you will be able to get tier one armor back here in the public test server, but when you level it up, it's going to be far weaker. It's not even comparable to what it is now. And you'll see that if you've played it, you've probably experienced this, that your tier one armor is just not going to protect you. I'm going to do more testing on this, but I did do a little bit of testing, and we'll talk about that in just a second. So with that out of the way, I want to jump in and show you the resources that are required and just show you the level of grind that's needed in order to get the armor back to where it was before the public test server, where you could basically get that armor as soon as you unlock the ability to craft it, you could craft that armor and be set. Now you're going to have to spend probably dozens of hours just to get back to where you were before. So I put together this spreadsheet. Everybody knows I love spreadsheets. I put together this spreadsheet. And what I did here was instead of just showing the summary of how many resources you need, I wanted to actually paint the exact picture of what it takes to get to make the to upgrade the armors. Because what people don't think about is, yes, it might take a certain amount of a resource, but what ends up happening is there's steps in those resources. So I want to quickly walk through this. And at the bottom, I'm going to show you exactly how many resources you need. You probably already know the number, but this is just to illustrate why, why why i feel like the game is going more away, more away from the survival genre and more towards like an rpg or even an mmo light and basically to upgrade your armors from one to five you're only going to need tier one resources you're going to need grub leather plates the grub leather plates are crafted at the workbench you're going to need grub leather scraps you're going to need sap and you need crude rope so of course you can get sap laying on the ground you can make crude rope in one of two ways you can either just pick a plant fiber and craft it into crude rope at a three to one ratio or you can put it in a spinning wheel at a one to one ratio for the grub leather scraps, they're made via grub hide, which you get from grubs. So you're going to have to go dig up some grubs, take the grub hide back to your base or wherever you're set up, put it in a grinder. That's going to turn it into the leather scraps. And then you can craft the leather scraps, the sap, and the crude rope into a grub, into grub leather plates. So basically what this means is just to get to level five and have your armor be probably maybe about, I don't even think it's halfway where it was before in terms of what protection it's going to provide you. You're going to need to have 62 grub leather plates. This is going to cost you 124 grub leather scraps. That means you're going to have to have about 25 grub hides, which means you're going to have to dig up about eight, a little over eight grubs because they did increase the amount of grub hides that grubs drop. They do drop at least three and on average three, it's up to eight sometimes, but it's almost always three. I think it's, I don't know what the exact percentage is, but it feels like almost always you're going to get three. And then you're going to get, you're going to need 62 sap and 62 crude rope. In order to make the crude rope, now assuming you're just starting out, you're probably not going to have a spinning wheel factory set up. So there's a good chance you might have to end up crafting these by hand, which would mean you would have to pick 186 plant fiber and craft them into the crude rope. If you do have a spinning wheel, it's only going to take 62, so slightly faster. But this is where the first step in the problem is that while, yes, you're going to find out that a lots of these resources, specifically the sap and the crude rope, which are going to be one of the resources you're going to need the most of, later on in the game, as you play through, you'll be able to set up automation for this not 100 percent automation but you can essentially set up sap collectors all over the place and you can also set up spinning wheels and if you put the like weed stems or grass planks in a grinder you can get tons of plant fiber for that so later on you'll be able to make this much easier but i'm more worried about the beginning of the game because the new player experience is going to be much rougher with this new public test server once it goes live if nothing changes and the reason for that is because you're going to basically be putting on armor that's going to provide you far less protection than, than before the public test server and you're going to have to spend tons of time getting these resources just to get yourself to level five now i did put i think we played i played a co-op co-op new game with original ryan last friday and we put i think we played for about five ish hours or so after we spent 30 minutes trying to figure out how to join each other but once we were able to figure out how to join each other I started up the game, we jumped in, we ended up completing the, we fixed the, well, we fixed Burgle, we did the uh, the hedge lab, and we set up, I think we have a spinning wheel grinder, we set up a little bit of automation, and I think when we finished, I think I had my acorn armor at like level two maybe, and I believe he had his grum armor at level one or two, so we did upgrade our armors a little bit, and we did upgrade a couple of weapons, 
But that took about five-ish hours, and I have roughly 600 hours in the game. He has over 1,000. So that's for people that, like, combined we have over 1,500 hours in the game. So we can pretty much just be super efficient in terms of upgrading our stuff and things. But, like, imagine a new player going in there. What are they going to be at? And how many? And we both died a bunch of times. We also did a mixer. We both died. We failed the mixer in the grasslands because the soldier ants were basically, like, two. they were three-shotting us. They also burned right through the grass walls. So... The progression through the early game is just going to be really rough for a new player, and that's kind of where like the, my main concern is here, because I don't have a problem getting these resources if I feel like in the end it's going to be more beneficial to me than before, but let's just finish this up real quick and I'll give my final thoughts on it. So next up, you're going to have the berry leather plates, which you're going to need to make to get your armor to level six and seven. Now, berry leather plates can be made from berries. The berries can be found, obviously, in the hedge right now. That's the only place to get them. And in order to make a berry leather plate, you're going to need to have two berry leather scraps, one bug rubber, and one grub, le grub leather plate. And what I wanted to do here is I wanted to show all the different levels here. So you're going to see there's some repeating things here. This grub leather plate here is now down here because you need a grub leather plate to make each berry leather plate, which means as you go through, you're going to need five berry leather plates for level six, 10 for level 10, or excuse me, 10 for level seven. And then in those in that recipe, you're also going to need five plate, grub leather plates for level one, and you're going to need 10 for level two. Now, going through, you're gonna need the berry leather scraps, which can be made from berry leather. Berry leather can be made from the berry chunks. The berry chunks can be harvested from the hedge. They can either be crafted into berry leather at a three to one ratio, or you can put them on the jerky rack at a one to one ratio. That's why you're gonna see the two different numbers here. You're gonna need bug rubber. Bug rubber is made from acid glands and sap. In order to get acid glands, you're either going to need to kill larvae, red soldier ants, infected larvae, ladybird larvae, or termites. Now, assuming you're playing at the very beginning of the game, and you're just trying to upgrade your tier 1 or tier 2 armor, you probably have not gone into the upper yard yet, which means you're not going to have access to the ladybird larvae or the termites. More likely than not, the enemies you're going to see the most of are going to be the larvae and the red soldier ants. Larvae drop on average, two acid glands, and red soldier ants drop one on average. And then you may see some infected larvae. I think the infected larvae drop one, ladybird larvae drop four, and termites drop two. But what you're going to end up having to do is you're going to have to kill a bunch of these. So as an example here, if you need to get, if you want to make your 15 bug rubber, which is how many you're going to need to upgrade one, one piece of armor to level seven, you are going to need to kill about 15 larvae or 30, 30 red soldier ants. Those are the, or, or 15 infected larvae. But more likely than not, these are going to be the two that you find first, which is going to be the larva and the red soldier ant. So that's quite a bit of kills there. Just to upgrade one armor to level six or seven, up to level seven. You're also going to need more sap in addition to the sap we needed up here. And you're going to need the grub leather plates. So even more sap there. So sap is going to be one of the bottlenecks. You're going to end up having to pretty much set up tons of sap collectors. And you're also going to need the spinning wheels for the crude rope because that also is pretty costly. So that's level two. And... Just as a summary here, you need 15 plates, which cost 30 berry leather scraps. Your the the berry chunks here are not going to be a problem. You can get, I think, somewhere like between 50 and 60 berries every time you go to the hedge. I don't know if they respawn every day or if it's every couple of days, but one pass through the hedge, you're probably going to need enough berry leather to or berries to berry chunks to upgrade as many pieces of armor as you want. It's kind of weird that, that that's the most plentiful resource. I would say that's probably equivalent to quartzite for upgrading weapons. But the bot like one of the bottlenecks is going to be the grub hides. You're going to have to dig up, even though they made the grubs drop more hides, you're still going to have to dig up grubs every day to end up just leveling up one set of armor. Whereas one set, th one pass through of the, the hedge is probably going to give you more than enough berry chunks that you're ever going to need. But then again, you're going to have to go through in here, get the bug rubber, get the grub leather plates. So it just starts adding up and starts compounding. Now, moving on to levels eight and nine. Levels eight and nine are going to require you to get pupil leather plates. And the pupil leather plates are made from pupil leather scraps, which are made from pupil leather. Pupil leather is made from pupa hide. Pupa hide can currently only be found up underneath the, it's underneath the shed deck, the little decking that's in front of the shed, and also down in the caverns that are in the upper yard. Now, this can be crafted, and actually this is, needs to be fixed because, yeah, I did fix this. The pupil leather, when you craft it at the workbench, you have to use five pupa leather to make one pupa, pupa five pupa hide make one pupa leather, Whereas it's three berry chunks make one berry leather. And down here, you're going to see that if you put it on the jerky rack, it's one for one. So depending on how you're going to do that, it's going to be seeing how you need how many you need. And as with the berry leather or with the berries, you're not going to need to get that many pupa in order to actually just upgrade a single piece of armor. So this is not going to be a bottleneck. The main bottleneck is levels one through five. However, you're going to see you do need bug loop. And then, of course, you're going to need berry leather plates. And as we just talked about, 
To make the berry leather plates, you need berry leather scraps, bug rubber, and you also need grub leather plates. So as you can see, this cascades down here to where the tier one resources you're gonna need a ton of. Now, I don't personally have a problem with having to go back this actually gives you a reason to be back into the early parts of the, the map, the grasslands, going over to the hedge and stuff like that. I, I actually like the fact that we'd have to go back to those places. But I do think that this, the amount of resources that are required seems a bit a bit excessive. And especially for a new player, maybe somebody who just casually wants to play the game, because I feel like most of the people playing this game or a lot of the people playing this game, let's not just generalize here. I think a lot of the people playing the game are playing it casually. They just like to build stuff and they just want to be able to play the game and not die all the time. And with this new change to the upgrade armor upgrades, they're no longer just going to be able to feel safe. They're not going to be able to win many fights. They're going to end up dying a lot more often. And one thing I haven't mentioned at this point is this is how many you need to upgrade a single piece of armor. If you want to upgrade a full set, you need three times this. So let's quickly head down here. And this is just going to show the summary. You've probably seen these numbers before. But this is the summary of what it takes to upgrade a single piece of armor from levels 1 to 9. So it takes 92 grub leather plates, which means you're going to need 184 grub leather scraps. To make the grub leather scraps, again, you're going to need to have grinders. And you're going to have to dig up a bunch of grubs. So you're going to need 37 grub hides roughly, which means you're going to have to dig up about 12 grubs. That's not terrible right now it's much better than it was before but you're gonna need 122 sap for each piece of armor you're gonna need 92 crude rope that means you either need to get 276 uh, plant fiber if you're handcrafting them or you're gonna need 92 plant fiber if you have a spinning wheel or spinning wheels you're also gonna need 30 berry leather plates which means you're gonna need 60 berry leather scraps which means you're gonna need 12 berry leather and that means you can either get 10 point about 10 chunks on if you're crafting them by hand or you need about three to four if you're putting them on the jerky rack not terrible you're gonna need 30 bug rubber that requires 30 acid glands which means you either need to kill 60 larvae you're gonna need to kill 30 red soldier ants you're gonna need to kill 30 infected larvae 7.5 ladybug larvae or 15 termites now once you're in the upper yard and you're just trying to upgrade your tier three armors, this is not a big deal because you can kill the ladybird larva and get, I think it's four per, they drop something like that. So later on, it's not that big of a deal. The big deal is the beginning of the game when you're going to have to be killing tons of larva or red soldier ants just to upgrade your armors if you want to upgrade them all the way up to level nine. And then for the pupil leather plates, you're going to need 15 in total to get to level nine for a single piece. That means 30 scraps, six pupa leather, which means you're going to need either to craft 20 pupa hide by hand or put four on the jerky racks. And you're going to need 15 bug loop. The, again, these are not that big of a deal because by the time you get access to these, you'll be able to get plenty of them. And the big, basically the big bottleneck here is the beginning of the game. Now, the reason I think this is a big issue is because by the time, like you really need to have better armor now. I've done some testing. I spent about an hour testing the armors. I tested them both in the PTS and outside the PTS to compare what kind of damage we're taking. Now in this update, they're the, in the PTS, they have also, not only have they made armor basically they i don't want to say they nerfed armor but this when you craft armor it no longer provides the defense that it did pr before the public test server once you get it up to level nine it feels about the same in some situations as an example i tested both roly-poly armor against the roly-polies that are up in the upper yard and black ox beetles in both the pts and pre pt and and before the and with outside the pts made sure i had no mutations on in either one no molar upgrades nothing like that so it was basically just going up there and what i found was Against those enemies specifically, it felt like the roly-poly armor was taking about the same, I was taking about the same amount of damage. I also tested ladybug armor uh, again in the PTS and not PTS. Now, for both cases, the roly-poly and the ladybug, I went level nine bulky to get the maximum amount of defense. They both felt about the same. I can't be, I can't tell if it's exactly the same, but they looked about the same because we don't know the exact numbers. Taking a charge attack from the black ox beetle as well as getting hit with the, I guess, the jump attack by the the roly-poly it looked like it took about the same amount of damage now interestingly enough though i also tested against ladybird larva because they're a little bit of a weaker enemy and what i found was that for the roly-poly armor before the public test server you could take about 23 hits before a ladybird larva would kill you in the public test server you can only take 10 before it'll kill you you can take i think it was six hits with ladybug armor pre-pts in the pts with level nine bulky ladybug armor it was four so essentially what it seems like has happened is that the highest level enemies are, they feel like they're dealing about the same amount of damage, but it seems like the lower tier enemies, and like I said, I'm going to do more testing. I have a sneaking suspicion that mosquitoes are going to be very similar to ladybird larva, where they just, they can do a decent amount of damage to you before the PTS, but in the PTS, they're doing a ton of damage. So I think what's ended up happening was the lower tier, the tier one, tier two enemies have been buffed to deal more damage. And this just further complicates the issue of a new player experience where 
if they're playing right now before the bug strike back public test server if they're just playing the regular game they download the game they play it or they've been playing it they're going to probably be okay and maybe they're going to die occasionally because they're just not familiar with how to perfect block they're not they don't know where all the dangerous bugs are maybe they don't know the right weapon combinations or what like armors you use they're probably going to die sometimes everybody's going to die sometimes in a survival game especially if you go into it blindly but i think after this public test server if this update goes live as is i kind of feel like for newer players and casual players that the they're just going to die much more often just because the weaker bugs that you're going to run into early on are dealing more damage now and your armor's providing less defense and it's and to get your to get yourself back to where you wanted to be before you're just need, need to need to harvest a ton of resources as you can see here and like i said this is per piece so as an example if you wanted to upgrade an entire armor set to level nine you're gonna have to multiply these by three you're gonna need 276 grub leather plates you're gonna need 366 sap you're gonna need what is that 276 crude rope that's a lot of resources to be farming and it almost feels like this game's turning into, like I said, an MMO, or even like almost feels like it needs to have more automation. Like, is this supposed to be Factorio or Satisfactory, where you just sit there and farm resources or set up like little automation things and just have, like, you're gonna end up sitting in your house, putting stuff in a grinder, then taking it out of a grinder, then putting it on the spinning wheels, then taking off the spinning wheels. You're gonna have to go to the table and craft it. Then you're gonna be like, oh, geez, I don't have, I need to go get more sap, or I need to go get more acid glands. You're gonna have to run out and do that, then come back and craft the bug rubber. And then you're just gonna have to keep repeating these cycles. You're gonna put stuff on jerky racks. You're essentially gonna have to have like a factory set up. And I just happen to be lucky that leading up to this public test server a couple months ago, while I was over in the hedge, I decided to just build like a little berry factory over there for no reason other than that I was bored. And I had a bunch of jerky racks set up over there. And every time I went over there, I shot down a bunch of berries, put them on the jerky rack. So I have tons of jerky. And it's like I said, it's not hard to get uh, tons of beef. I'm sorry, I have tons of jerky racks with berry leather on them. So I have more berry leather than I'll ever need. I can go get pupa leather, pupa hide, and not have any problems, but it's the grubs that are going to be slowing me down. And what I ended up doing, I just spent a couple hours upgrading one armor set only to find out I didn't like it. And then I had to go back and go get more grubs. And I'm basically just running around digging up grubs, going back. And then I'm like, oh, I need more sap. So I have like 10 sap collectors set up at the fallen branch or whatever. And that's not even enough because like I said, you're going to need 366 sap to upgrade one armor set from levels zero to nine which means I think each sap collector gets about five or six sap, sap in it every time it fills up. I don't think, I'm not sure if it fills up every day or every other day, but that means you're going to need what, 50-ish or something like that just to level up one, one piece of armor. That's insane. I don't think anybody wants to run around picking up sap off the ground. As I've suggested to people, if you want to go around picking plants, you could just go play New World or play a MMO where you're basically just running around picking up resources, crafting it to level yourself up. I personally would rather this game be more on the survival side because that's why I got into it. I'm not interested in playing this game like I did with Fortnite Save the World where I put 4,000 hours into it because I'm leveling up to do tougher missions. This game doesn't feel like it's ever going to be that way. Yes, they've added tougher enemies. I'm sure in the uh, the rest of the map that they haven't up updated the top right portion of the map, I'm sure they'll probably end up having even tougher enemies. Maybe they'll add another boss, something like that. And it'll actually make all these systems fit together better. And honestly, I, like I said, it's hard for me to say exactly without knowing the big picture because we're getting things piecemeal. We have no idea what actually is going to like what the all the systems, how they're going to fit together perfectly at 1.0. All I can do is comment on how I feel like it is now, how it's making me feel when I'm playing the game and looking at it from a, the perspective of a casual player or maybe just the average player thinking specifically like my kids. They both saw that there was a new update out. I said, once the public test server is done, we'll play it because they usually play on Xbox and with all the Xbox crashes. Let's just wait till the bug strike back update comes out and we'll play it. That after seeing these changes, I have a sneaking suspicion that they're probably only going to want to play the game for a couple of days. They're going to realize that they're going to be dying a lot. We were playing a mild and they were dying a lot before because they don't have much experience in survival games outside of like Minecraft. And they were dying in mild. If we go into a new game, even if we play on mild, they're still going to be dying. They're going to be dying more often. They're going to have to be going and get like picking pl plant fiber and doing all this stuff just to get themselves back to where we were, like not even where we were before. And I just feel like overall from them, and I'm probably gonna ask, I'm gonna let them play it when we when the update goes live just to see so I can actually get feedback. But I can already see, I've seen comments on Discord, I've seen comments on Reddit, I've seen comments on my some of my YouTube videos and stuff like that and in my live stream. There are people that are voicing their opinions saying that they feel like this grind is just not something they wanna deal with. And if it was rewarding at the end, I don't think as many people will be upset about it, but because we're basically having to work and get all these resources 
just to get ourselves back to about where we were before, but then that's not even the case because many of the insects are now dealing more damage, which means you're gonna die more often. It just doesn't make any sense. So you combine this with the weapon upgrades and the weapon upgrades are a little bit easier because you just need quartzite, which is one resource to upgrade one weapon. So I think it's something like 62 quartzite to get your weapons from level one to five. But then again, that's also gonna be gated because you can't make the globs until you get the oven. You can't make an oven now be until you go up to the charcoal or the barbecue spill, which means you're going to be using most likely, more likely than not, when you go into the upper yard, you're most likely going to be using level five weapons and at best level seven armor. And I can tell you right now that if you get hit by a roly poly or a black ox beetle in level five armor and le or level seven armor, even if it's the antline armor and you're only using level five weapons, you are going to stand no chance. You are just going to die over and over again unless you use a bow and cheese everything, which I don't think that's how the developers want us playing the game. So hopefully they look at this progression. I don't feel like, the, I feel like the progression is is less balanced now than it was before. Before you would just get your tier one weapons and tier one armor, beat better, beat, go to more dangerous areas, fight more dangerous enemies, get your tier two stuff, then tier three. Felt like a decent progression. Now that system is all jumbled up where the tier one weapons and the tier one armors at level zero are dealing less damage and providing less defense. The enemies are doing more damage. So it's going to be, the combat's just going to be made artificially harder. The grind, the get to get to back where you were before just has all this artificial grind in it. So anyway, that's kind of where I am right now. I hope they look at this and try to figure out a way to make the, I don't know. I, like I said, I, I don't, I'm starting to think that it's not that the armor needs adjusting. I think it's that the enemy's damage they're dealing needs to need adjusting because like I said, the, the mid-tier enemies feel like they're doing way more damage, and I can definitely say the ladybird larva are, and I'm going to do more testing on the other ones when I have time. But I think that's what needs to be fine-tuned here, and I also think the grind here needs to be reduced by probably, like I said, two-thirds or something like that because I don't think it's fair to expect an average player to have to get 366 sap and 276 crude rope and dig up something like, what, like 36 or 37 grubs, crafting all these things, going through all these processes, just to get your stuff to level nine and that doesn't even include to get in the berries and the 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 pupil leather and stuff like that so overall progression right now feels less balanced than it did before this public test server and i really hope they look into it they did buff the grub drop rates for grub hides they did make repair costs really cheap so i do appreciate those things but i really want them to look at the overall progression system and the grind because this isn't an mmo this is not an rpg it's a survival game now if they want it to be an rpg game with survival mechanics that's their prerogative. I can't control that, but I can just leave my feedback here. And like I said, let me know in the comments down below what your opinion is of these changes to both armor upgrades and even going back to the weapon upgrades, how our what we the equip, the gear that we basically had has been has been nerfed essentially so that when you start with it it no longer does as much damage or provides as much defense as it did before these updates and you have to work you probably 10 hours or so maybe five to 10 hours, depending on how much efficiency you have set up. And if early game, you're not gonna be able to get this stuff efficiently. Are you okay with dying a lot more? Are you okay with the enemies just dealing a way more damage, even though we're, and then also having ourselves being nerfed in the process? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you're going over to the grounded discord and leaving feedback over there. And you can also go to the Reddit and leave feedback over there. Anywhere, and you can send them emails. You can go to the support.obsidian.net, send them an email with your thoughts, whatever the easiest way is for you to provide your thoughts. And if you agree with me or disagree with me, it doesn't matter. I want you to, to share your opinion just so we can kind of get a feel of where the game is. because. I think we all want the game to be the best it can be. I think we want it to be welcoming to as many players as possible because the more players that play it, the better it's going to be overall in the end and the more likely there is to be content added later on after 1.0 if it's actually going to happen. If we have tons of players playing and sticking with it, it's more likely to get more content or perhaps maybe down the road, maybe having a sequel or something along those lines. But if the game just loses a bunch more players because of these grindy systems, that's just not going to help our case. So anyway, thank you for watching. I know I've talked a long time again, but I want to just get this stuff out there just so we can get... make. Make sure the update is in the best possible state before the PTS ends. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you hit the like button if you made it this far and consider subscribing if you already haven't done so. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.